off, uh, the blue one is water, uh, the white one is uh, snow or ice, and so ice in the lake, it is only true. Um, the black is essentially totally destroyed vegetation, and then this, these sort of reddy colours are heavily damaged vegetation, and the greens are uh, healthier vegetation. So that's the kind of classification you can do with a combination of computer analysis of the satellite image and some, maybe a lot, of fieldwork to trace. And what that is to be compared against uh, is the kind of not using satellite classification uh, that, um, that came before this, which is this very much more generalized approach. This is a damage map of the same area, the white box is the area that's, that's here, um, compiled, uh, well, as you see, 20 years ago, um, based on field analysis, but not based on use of satellite data. So you see it's uh, very heavily damaged, not quite so heavily damaged, somewhat qualitative um, categories of, uh, uh, of uh, vegetation. Um, interpretation, uh, if we take a single image, like the one we're just looking at there, um, we can things go well, uh, establish correlation between vegetation units and the degree of pollution exposure, measure the model, that usually works. Uh, we may be able to com compare the vegetation distribution that is there now with, with what we know would have been there in undisturbed uh, states, so we can see how disturbed the vegetation is. Um, more powerfully, we can do change detection, we can take um, classified images from different dates, see how the vegetation has explicitly changed. Um, there are some problems with that. Um, if you try to do change detection, what typically happens is that you have a, an image from now, which you um, calibrate with field data that you get now, and you have an image from 20 years ago, and then you think to yourself, well, wouldn't it be nice to go 20 years into the past and actually see how the vegetation distribution was then? That's not often possible. I mean, sometimes you can find a sufficiently detailed vegetation map that was compiled that day, but usually you're in the situation of having to guess. So classification of imagery without fieldwork is complicated. It's complicated by the same things, phenological variations, old satellite data may be not technically as um, uh, reliable as modern uh, satellite data. And as I was saying before, uh, it's not always quite as clear how to classify tundra areas as, as it might be. Uh, so much for visible imagery. Uh, radar imagery is promising, but rather underexplored, I would say. Uh, it's good for looking at forest dynamics. Uh, as an example here, here are three uh, exactly coincident radar images uh, from different dates, uh, again showing the area around the smelt module. Here they are all stacked up together into what we call an temporal composite. Um, so the different colours in this image are telling you about things that respond over time in a different way. And basically anything that's on the spectrum from black to grey to white didn't change significantly over that time, so that's called a bare rock. Here, that's a mountainous area, that's another mountainous area, uh, that's water, everything, these, are, these green areas of water, and everything else is vegetation. <coughs> um, okay, a bit quicker, I should say something a little bit about mining and ore concentration. This is the second most important source of environmental pollution in the terrestrial Arctic. Uh, again, um, we can find ourselves to the Arctic, um, we find most of this. Russia, indeed on the Cove Peninsula, in those towns there. What it does is these things here, landscape change, it can put tailings, the, the waste, uh, sort of dusty stuff that you get from this, soft and toxic, um, but this stuff can go into the air, it can go into the water. Um, more pictures, this is the uh, quarry for appetite, which is a phosphate mineral in Kiros, which is on the Cove Peninsula, uh, for scale. There is an enormous truck, so it's a very, very big hole in the ground. Um, uh, yeah, these are these are buildings. These are big buildings on the top there. So this is um, something like a thousand feet. Sorry, 300, 400 meters. Um, tailings. 
So this is the dust, the, the, the waste product, which isn't the phosphate. Um, this is, well, in this particular place, this is dumped into what used to be a lake. It's actually now just full of dust. Um, on windy days, it blows around. Um, this is the uh, quarry at Nerils. This is um, probably one of the biggest holes in the ground that there is anywhere, actually. Um, and the spoil from that has been piled up into a big heap here, which is actually so big. This is the city of Nerilsk in the background. This is actually so big that it's forming a rock glacier now. It's full of its ice cord and it's on the move. So it's, it's actually <laughs> heading towards the city. Um, so, which is maybe a good thing. Um, so, so, what can remote sensing do here? Well, land cover can be observed directly. And the satellite record actually goes back to about 1960. Um, it used not to, but it does now. That's paradoxical. But um, what's happened is that satellite imagery that was obtained for extremely secret purposes by secret organizations in the uh, United States uh, were um, declassified um, by uh, President Clinton. Um, so that dates the classification. Uh, so this um, uh, spy satellite imagery, Corona imagery, um, which goes back to about 1960, is now freely, publicly, well, freely available. It's available at cost, but it's publicly available. So uh, it's not so easy to work with, but um, it's not calibrated or anything like that, but it's, um, uh, it's pretty useful. Sediment plumes of water, we can see those directly. Um, smoke or dust plumes, we can observe those directly if they're stable, if they don't change much over time. Um, one of the big problems is episodic events, um, where a smelter, for example, emits a great big loop of um, pollution over the course of an hour or a week or something like that. If your satellite overpass isn't there, you don't see it. So um, episodic events are a problem. Uh, that is a true color image 